Yes, 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 yes. Shalom, shalom, chavarim, shalom. This is Yadin. This is Yadon. Yadon ben Chayim, a.k.a. Ras Ayadonis, Yadonis. Yadinos. Here, 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 L.O.J., the Lion of Judah Society. We, the black Jews of the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. So here, 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 let's continue the reason and give thanks, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, also others, you know, from other nations. But generally speaking, you know, give thanks for the responses, the opinions, critiques even, you know, or even the disagreements even from those who we share fellow common, you know, fellows who we share common denominator because, you know what I'm saying, you know, there are different, you know, um, mansions in my father's house. There are many mansions, right? So not, let's not let those who are outside of, you know, this common denominator, you know, um, push or pull us off of the inspiration which we're called. That's a message of word right there to fellow, we say fellow Hebrews, fellow Beta Israel, fellow Israelites, fellow um Yehudim, you know, this is a word to the fellows, because sometimes we will disagree, and sometimes when we disagree about something, it's on social media, or here, there, then others try to like, you know, let's not get swerved by like, you know, any of the COINTELPRO, right, in other words, we need to have this dialogue, even if we have to have this dialogue in public, you know, this is forensic, I don't know if you know about forensic, this is like a forensic, it said the judgment, I'm going to go to Enoch, I want to point out Enoch, now as you can see, no doubt by the title, and hopefully this will be in the title, something concerning Noah, right? Noah, right? Some have said in response to the Canaanites uh, video, and even before that, but let's just say in response to the Canaanite video, some have said, oh, Noah was a white man. He was a blonde hair. Then some have added to that. Now, some have said correctly that he was an albino, according to what the scripture brings out. But some have taken some of the mistrans, some of the translations, right? Some of the translations, some of the interpretations of the verse and the area in the Ethiopic, I'm going to put Ethiopic first because that's the first witness to this ancient scroll was from the Israelites of Ethiopia. I got to emphasize that. It says, raise your voice like a trumpet. So the Israelites of Ethiopia. Now, when we say the Israelites of Ethiopia, we can get into the history there. But this points to the Bible. When it says that Moshe married a Kushawit, a Kushit, he married an Ethiopian <laughs> wife. Now, remember what happened to Miriam? Miriam, 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 Miriam. Oh, sister, sister, sister. Achot, achot shelanu. What happened to she? Well, when she has spoke against um, um, Moshe, also Aaron, 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 I think Aaron was along for the ride. We don't get actually Aaron saying anything. It's more like, you know, you have, you say your sister, you know, is, is talking about your brother and, and you are a sibling too. If you're like a male, you might just be there. I, I've been in that situation. Sometimes the, the bad thing about that is, you know, sometimes you just kind of like by being there you're encouraging it that's what the scripture says that it was uh, you know Miriam and then also mentions Aharon but it gives us only the, the 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 kind of um witness of what Miriam was saying when she went against Moshe and then the consequences for that right according to the scripture was a sara'at similar to the consequences for the hand of Moshe now many of the black Hebrews and the Hebrew Israelites and the I and I people us many of us you know, when we haven't, you know, grown to the fuller, you know, the full truth, the epinosis of that particular area there, we will say a lot of things because, you know, coming out of, you know, um, this experience, 400 year experience and the confusion of Babylon, right, of counterfeit Christianity, of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant misinterpretation, the whitewashing, all the confusion and everything, you know, one cannot expect or should not expect, you know, um, we to be perfect yet but we are perfecting it and it's the iron sharp and iron right here so this is to say that noah was a black man just pause on that right there because someone's gonna be shouting out like no, he was a he was a white man the bible said he was white when, when i say the bible enoch the book of enoch says no the translation which translation are you reading which translation of the book of Enoch, are you reading? That's the first question right here. Mm -hmm. People say, why is that important? Even if it's a translation, it doesn't matter. See, what, you, what you're what not acknowledging is, you're not acknowledging when one's trying to dance around it, they're not trying to acknowledge the fact that 
there's different translations of the book of Enoch. And how many of you have really been studying and reading and are able to, or have ones that you know that you trust who are able to go into the, um, whether it's the Qumran, people will point to the Qumran. Right, but before they found the so-called Dead Sea Scrolls, there's some questions we have about the Dead Sea Scrolls, but anyway, they found that, and they say it's authentic, legitimate, but all it does is testifies to the Beta Yisrael, the Beta Israel of Ethiopia. When we say the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, we're pointing to an ancient historical witness. All right, all right, yes. Um, keep that on hold for a moment, please. Bakashi. Yes, yes, yes. So here, 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 just to keep this brief because we've got this podcast going on, Rastafari Israelites, check it out the evening time. If some of our um, streams get like blocked, sometimes it might be because of the occasional maybe music that we play and we're just making lists of different music that we are not able to play because of the present laws, right? This whole thing about the laws, right? And when we get mature, as we grow and we get mature, we'll begin to recognize you know, how all these things, you know, work together, together, you know, like how all these things work together, together. Not going to touch on that, but we're going to have some interviews speaking about saving black music. You know, what's going on with music, what's going on in the reggae music as well. As it was in the days of Noah, right? Did not say that? As it was in the days, let's not Robeno say that, as it was in the days of Noah. Now, Noah was not a white man, blonde hair, blue eyed, as you might see on some of the, um, you know, some of the disinformation, some of the information slash disinformation that's out there. If you just go and do a search. In fact, let's just bring this up right here. Try to keep this as um, <laughs> short and sweet as possible. Right. You know, because we know that what they call it, um, attention, you know, the attention, attention, you know, <laughs> paying attention with attention deficit. They call it attention deficit um, disorder, <laughs> disorder. Right. So Noah white man in enoch let me just put that there you can see our search right there for transparency noah right noah right white man in enoch question mark really put a question mark behind that but that was help for our search right here because we heard it brought up again and we was checking certain comments um to our most recent post and um this is not going into everything that that commenter said right here but in scanning over it, when we read it, we saw it, we said, okay, because someone else had made that same statement or something too similar, you know, about Noah. And we had gone into a vlog, a presentation a little while ago, whether on the previous channel, Rastafari sabbatical, you know, regarding Noah and the allegations of whether he was a white man or the truth of the matter, whether he was a albino, right? And we had stated based on studying the different translations and then looking at firstly the Ethiopic, the Gus, right? And even the Amarinya translations in the Metz of Kedus in His Majesty's Bible, the King of Kings Bible. But going back to the, the older manuscripts, right? The older manuscripts that have the more archaic Shemitic. Now Gus is like more pure Shemitic. I want to point it out. While Hebrew, biblical Hebrew is Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Shemitic, Kamo, Hamito, Kamo, Shemitic. It's almost like a Creo. Same thing with um, Amharic, where you say he was turned to the people, right? A pure language. Pure in that sense means a, refined, a refinement. The pure is always not the first thing. You know, like when you purify, key point, purify, when you purify something. You know, you have a puree something, purify something. You're taking the original materials and you're seeking to refine them and make them better. That's what pure means in the sense of purify, pure language. You turn to the people. That's in um, Zephaniah, right? That's in Zephaniah, like 3 and 9 and 10. He says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So it's kind of interesting that the so-called world at large, and in particular, the so-called Christian world, which is actually because of, um, we could say Esau, <laughs> you know, because of that situation with Esau, it's divided, right, into two, you know, it's divided into the Western Gentile, the Northern, the so-called European, the whitewash, what would become later on the whitewash, iconoclast phase, and the original, right, that original coming out of, we could say, coming out of its um, Yehudi, its Israelitish roots. And this is why we talk about Judeo-Coptic or Judeo-Christian roots, right? And Ethiopia being one of the 
um, representatives of the early, we can say the early disciples, apostles, the early church, you know, the early Yehudim, Judahites who believed, who accepted that Yeshua HaNotri, that Jesus of Nazareth, whom people call Jesus of Nazareth, right, is HaMushiach, as Peter, based on that rock, on that rock, on this rock, Yeshua HaMushiach, Bain Elohim Chayim, right? Ani me amin, admitting that Yeshua, right, is HaMushiach. He is that anointed, that prophesied anointed. That points us to the fact that there must have been a prophecy, right? There must have been some prophecy. So even the context of Yeshua HaMushiach, like Christ is not Jesus's last name in that sense. There's a whole context that get lost in Christianity because Christianity as comes down to us today by and large in the West cuts off the roots mm -hmm. and a tree without roots what happens to a tree without roots that's what's happening that's what happened to Western Gentile Christianity that's why they used to be so Christian right in the early part of the 400 years where they enslaved right the people of the book we the Beta Israel they were so Christian it wasn't like they were so Christian Right. But then all of a sudden, like now we see them going after all kind of different things and making questions of, you know, well, 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 I'm not Christian no more. I'm talking about white folks. I'm talking about the white nations, the European nations. As we go historically, it seems as though they were walking around, you know, with the cross and the Bible and talking, you know, this like the Jesus thing. You know, this is what they were doing. This is how they came up because Yeshua HaMoshiach Robeinu said, what did he say to us? He said that many shall come in my name and say that they are, right? <laughs> many will come in my name. And how have the Gentiles come, right? They've come in Jesus' name. They come in Zeus' name, right? <laughs> they will come in my name and they'll they say that what? They will come in my name and say they are Christ, right? And this is like twofold, that word of Yeshua HaMashiach, twofold. One Right? They said that they are Christ by saying they are Christian, Christian, like Christian, according to Antioch in the context of what we have in the scripture, right? Means that they are like a little Christ. But among the latter day Gentiles, the white nation, they began to believe that they are Christ. How do we know this? Because look how they whitewashed the picture and put Kaiser. They put Kaiser Borgia. The Kaiser Borgia, that's the Caesar Borgias. Y'all might say Caesar are studying the linguistics. The proper pronunciation is Kaiser. Kazar, Kaiser, Kazar, Kaiser. So to make a lot more sense? All right. So here on Noah, Noah was not a white man, blonde hair. I thought somebody, I thought somebody said blonde hair, blue eyes. From our study of the scripts, Ethiopically, and even when we make reference to the, the what do they call the Dead Sea Scrolls, Qumran, the Qumran scroll. There's some question on that there. Right, there's some question. We do see that it does reflect the earlier testimony. The first testimony that the West gets is from the Ethiopic, right? It's from Ethiopia, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. The Kush, Kush, Kush. Interesting that Kush in the Middle East today, among some of those racist ones who say they are Jews, they use Kush as the N word. I don't know if you knew that, but they use Kush, Kush as the N word. So if they call you like over there, you go over there and they say Kushi. It all depends, but they might be trying to say that you're an N-word, you're a nigger. They use that word as a... Isn't that interesting? Mm. And then we have the scripture saying, um, are you not as the children of the Kushim? So in the modern, among modern Jews and even pale red Arabs over there, are you not as the children of the Kushim? Aren't you as the, the Negroes? Aren't you as the niggers? Oh, children of Yisrael? That's how that verse is pointed even today when you understand the principles that govern it. Now, I'll point that out right there because we're just establishing a little foundation right here as we then point to the scripture and disprove that Noah was not, Noah was an albino, not a white man, blonde hair, blue eyes. Mm. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Now, when we say blonde, what do we mean by blonde? Oh. When we say blonde, if you've read, um, was it Leviticus chapter 13? Noah's complexion was very unique amongst everyone else, according to the Enoch, the Metzafe, Hanok, according to Hanok, Hanok, according to Enoch, right? So here, let's bring this out right here, and let's take a look at what we mean. So when Noah was born, right, when Noah was born, let's go here. 
it was something a little like this. All right? <laughs> Imagine before the birth of Noah, my those peoples there, my in the ancient time, the early times, we could say like into the first times, right, were black and brown and melanated. And there's a wide range of melanation. Is there not? There's a wide range of um um, what do you call it? Um, the phenotypes, like like features, different features. There's a wide range of phenotypes amongst, generally speaking, black peoples. And we say really humanity in the beginning, we could say was black people. But it's hard for people to understand that because of counterfeit Christianity, because of white racism and white supremacy and all the rhetoric, right? The um, disinformation. It's like the scripture says that the Gentiles have inherited lies. So when we say something like, well, um, humanity equals black peoples, say peoples, peoples, right? In the beginning, in the beginning, humanity equals black peoples. But when we say black peoples, a lot of people, because of uh, white racism, will think of this, the, the 400 years, you know, the trauma, the st uh, Stockholm, they're suffering Stockholm syndrome, they're st studying white supremacy syndrome. There we go. We coined this. Right, Yada, right, and the Chabarim, we just coined this right here, right? <laughs> Somebody else may have already said this, but we haven't heard. If we could recall anybody else, we'll try to give them credit. But white supremacy syndrome, right? White supremacy is like, it's like the latter day 400 year, post 400 year Stockholm syndrome. But once you are freed up, once you are healed, once you are kind of, as you say, cleansed of that, <laughs> you know, like it's, they develop leprosy <laughs> in a sense. They develop leprosy, right? Not so much of the skin, of the body, the carbon organic structure, but leprosy of psycho spiritually, right? There's a psycho spiritual leprosy, right? So that when we say these things, right, it probably doesn't sit well. So if you hear us say these things like, well, humanity, when we put it into proper context, Right, humanity was black peoples, right? Black peoples that had melanation, you know, like melanated peoples, right? But not just one stereotype. You know, there's a stereotype when white man, the white peoples, the Europeans, you know, 400 plus years ago, they had a lot of stereotypes, you know, and they came for a lot of stereotypes. And when they brought I and I people over here, the Beta Israel to the Americas and Caribbean, they had a lot of stereotypes. You can tell that when we start to look at their racist imagery. Look at the racist imagery going back hundreds of years over here in the Americas. Isn't it interesting? Because when you see how they portray the black man, woman, and child, it's always one caricature. It's a caricature. It's a stereotype. Right. And then when you look at some of the available, more authentic images of the black people that were over here, you find that black people did not even conform to one stereotype even hundreds of years ago. Right. They didn't conform to one stereotype. The only thing that they basically the two things they had in common, all the different black peoples that were brought over here. When I said different type of black people. I'm talking about how they looked. Right, how they looked, even in the family sometimes. And it doesn't always mean that, oh, because they have a white person, because you have somebody light skin in the family, or somebody even white skin in the family, right? In a black family, right? Ancient humanity family, that is because of a white man, because the white race, as people would say today, or white people, even that whole idea is a latter day idea. You know, to really recognize how this thing called racism, right? What we're really dealing with now is the end product over 400 years. It's like the bottom of a funnel. You know, like when you have a bottom of a funnel, or it's like the dregs, you know, the dregs. The dregs is like, you ever drink something like tea or something like that, right? And then when you get to the bottom or, or you're drinking something, you get to the bottom of the bottle, the bottom of the cup and everything, all the sediment, the, all the sediment is at the bottom. So we're dealing with all the sediment right here at the end time of the nations, the end time of the Gentiles, right? Where now we have nations and we can say ethnicities and, and um, um, what people would call races or different seeds, different seeds from the original seed are more diversified. So we're looking at a more diversified picture, right, today, right, of peoples and different nations. But what even science kind of proves is that it all comes, the basic common denominator, there's a common denominator. Now there are differences, not to get into the whole Neanderthal thing, because some people think that the Neanderthal, right, and we are inclined, there's some evidence that even inclines us to, you know, uh, maybe co co-sign that, you know, um, <laughs> Well, yeah, let's not go too far right there from the Neanderthal thing. That's like bringing in the whole giants, 
you know, the whole giants, who are the giants and who are the, were the Nephilim, Nephilim, the fallen ones, were the Nephilim, the descendants of the giants or were the Nephilim, the original fallen um, angels, for lack of a better word, the fallen angels or watchers, right? That is not the point right here, but it's all kind of connected because if it's true what some people say, then maybe this is where the Neanderthal um, genetics gets into certain people's DNA and certain white peoples and a smaller percentage of certain Asian peoples, but almost 0% right of so-called black peoples coming out of, we could say, so-called Africa or the continent today. So the more melanated people seems to have less right oh none actually none actually that, that's what the science says none they said oh most of humanity share the common genes and so forth and so on most of them share common genes and everything but um but um the black people out of africa they don't have this there's something i would like to show you right here right we're trying to go at a lively pace we're showing these pictures of the like albino um black child amongst other black children Right to kind of show well when you're reading the areas and section of Enoch where it says that they were shocked at Enoch when he was born he was different than any other of we could say the children the B'nai Adam he was different than any other of the children of Adam remember Adam right Abdomni has a reference to red and reddish brown right and more and more ones and ones are doing their research and they're recognizing we had a lot of other ones really bring it out what we was one of the few initially to speak on and to um substantiate with the available evidence that we could at the time that red did not mean the white man some still believe this when the white man turns you know red or he gets he gets like sun sunstroke or something like that does that what see if that is true then we have to, in the Hebrew, apply those principles right to the beginning. And that actually by, that actually goes into the European, right, the, the racist paradigm. Because actually it's a part of the racist paradigm, right, to interpret or misinterpret red in terms of a white man. It's actually part of the racist paradigm. It's a part of what they actually put out. See, because we recognize we're Hebrews and Israelites and we see some of the basic facts concerning the curses, consequences of disobedience, right? And we begin to recognize that like, truly, you know, we have been lied to, right? And we recognize we're Israelite. We still have to grow in grace and knowledge, right? And that means we have to unpack, right? And untangle, right? A lot of the... Um, the, what's beyond the cover story the cover story is like kaiser borgia the cover story is like the whitewashed jesus you know yeshua you know to say it more correctly right that's the cover story right all oh, that's the cover story right here but then if they change the cover of the book and they've been manipulating such things whitewashing and perverting things they did the superficial right but then we have to now go into the text we have to go into the doctrine we have to go into the i i Ideas. It's like the whole Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Yes, it's a table of ancient nations according to the scripture. But it, somebody said, well, Ham was black and Japheth was white and Shem was like between gray or Asian or this or that. You know, they, they're not really clear. When they say Ham was black and Japheth was white, they're not really so clear. They say, well, he was kind of tawny. He was like tawny. He was like olive skin. There's olive skin black people. See, it all depends also. They said beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Many of us, we can see how these terms apply to black people, but amongst white people and those who've been infected by, by racism, white supremacy, they, they don't really see that, right? They don't really see that. And when I say like infected, I'm saying it's, it's a psycho-spiritual, it's a psychological disease, right? Because many of us have also been inflicted and infected with that, right? And it's taken us a while in the try to really recognize those things. Some, some might, might not be able to even admit it. And as you see how they may misinterpret um, areas of scripture, some basic areas, the whole thing about readiness is a basic area. So that's the point one. If they don't understand that correctly, then when they come to this point about Noah, right, being the first, um, as we use the term today, albino, he was the first who say natural birthed albino because of no consequence. It, it knows, I, Noah being albino was not the same as Miriam, right, being leprous. The similarity, there's a similarity there, but it was not because of the same reasons. I want you to understand that, the same reason. This obviously was a sign, 
right, according to the Ethiopic Book of Enoch. But then when we hear some folks saying, well, he was he was a white man, right? So this albino, this 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 child here that appears with the albino features, the similar features to Noah, right, right, basically, does this say that is he a white man? Is this a is this a white child? Is this a white child here? Like a white child to say like he's a child of white people, like white man child, right? White man, woman, and child, right? Child, <laughs> is he? Is this one right here? This is similar to as well. This is similar to right here as well, right? Right, amongst black children. So imagine, oh, just black children, right? Then all of a sudden somebody has a child, right? And this child comes out like this. Wouldn't that be like kind of shocking and amazing, right? If you would have seen this, oh, this is another example right here. Right? This is like Noah, right? As a child, Noah, Noah amongst the other children. Right? And this is what we have in the scriptural testimony. Now, what is the problem? The problem is the mistranslation, the miscontextualization. It's like when you see Noah, I mean not, not Noah, but when you see Enoch, get back to Noah in a moment, you see the book of Enoch, there's a few mentions of white. Just look through one of any copy you have of Enoch in English. And just search white. Just search white through the text. Maybe you have to do it with the PDF or, you know, search white, right? There's a section where it talks about, and there were these white men. We saw in one of the older translations of Enoch where it says there were these three white men. And some interpret this to be like, I think, either Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, like three of the angels. Some interpret this in the original, it was all put in allegorical signs. The oldest Enoch has it in allegorical signs. Right, e the oldest Enoch it speaks about allegorical signs. Right, the only names that are named, right, are those who were in um, Enoch's time, when it starts to point like to prophecies of the future, right, or prophecy of things to come. It uses the animal totems and it uses the ancient, we could say, um, Hebraic, the color code and color scheme. We hear about the, the white bull and the red bull and the black bull, you know. And now some would assume what well, that means that, you know, applying to, um, say, even like Cain, if we are correct. What's he called? A black, what's he called? A black bull, you know what I mean? And the white bull. And they think that, well, the, the different colors of the bull are talking about different races, right? No, th there's another way of looking at that, and that's the Hebrew way. It's like when we look into... Um, Exodus and we look into the, the the tabernacle construction and it's talking about the different colors of the materials it's talking about gold gold in the Hebrew commodities is divinity in manifestation because gold is a noble element it talks about silver the kesef silver right there is the redemption like has a theme of redemption silver right and also to recognize how these metals also work in other ways how they conduct you know electricity or how they can scientifically be used all of that is embedded right in the um in the typology right so when allegories or parables or proverbs are being used there is um it's like okay let me put it like this it's like in the spy like people spooks and spies and stuff like that they have codes so if I send you a code or something, you have to have the key. You have to have the key to translate the code. If you don't have the key to translate the code and the code, it gets intercepted. So a lot of the ancient messages have been intercepted. <laughs> a lot of the ancient messages have been intercepted. So, so now when we are trying to get the message that was being sent to us, it's been intercepted by white supremacy and white racism. See? You understand? It's been intercepted. So instead of us initially many times getting the, the, the true, my, you know, the truth of what the code, you know, what the message is saying, because we are interpreting it with the wrong code, with the wrong key, with the wrong key. We're interpreting the code with the wrong key, with the wrong key, right? So when it says that Noah, right, for example, the three men that in one translation, I think one or two, it says um, of Enoch, translation of Enoch, it said there were three white men. Right, there were three white men. Let's see if we can bring this up right here because let's substantiate what we're saying right here. I think we have right here Noah. Noah, let's see how this opens up. Right here. Let's see. What do we have here? And what do we have here? Let's see. Let's let's put white right here. And last time we was looking, we was right around the place, the spot. Hey, boom. You can see it right here. I think this is um Charles translation. 
right, is a, is, is a good translation otherwise, right, but this has kind of happened. Now, you can see this one is from the Ethiopic. Now, the Ethiopic, right, was first, you could say, um, rediscovered or it's from some documents that were appropriated or misappropriated, you know, the white men going places and, and finding a way to get quote unquote things, appropriate things speak on that at another time but here we're in lxxx vii so l is 50 xxx x is 10 so we have 50 60 70 80 so that's 80 v is 5 i i i is 1 so we have 85 6 7 so in enoch chapter 87 right we have to read the whole thing up to the point that we like to zoom in and again i saw so this is hanok this is hanok this is Hey, no, this is Enoch, right? And again, I saw how they began to gore each other and devour each other, devour, eat up each other. And the earth began to cry aloud. She began to call out to so the earth. Ain't that something? The earth has a consciousness. She, the earth, has a consciousness. Mm. Selah, just a little many on that. Higayo, right? Verse two. And I again raised my eyes to Shamayim, to Shamai, to the heavens, the place of the, the Sham, Mayim, the place of the Sham, Sham, the place there is Mayim, waters, heavenly waters, upper waters. And I saw in a vision, in the Chazon, and behold, there came forth from heaven, Shamai, Shamayim, down here says, beings who were like white men. Right. One of them came forth from that place and three with him. Now, because of this translation right here, right, this is back in the 18, maybe 1900s, right? Because this translation here, even though this translation, right, and the translator, this is what's so important about what the translator has has done. I think this is Charles. Um, um, this is the Charles. Um, uh, I don't know why I'm not remembering his last name right now, right here. Right. But this is his translation. Right. And along with his translation, right, along with his translation, these were translated and among scholars. Right. And um, along with the translation, they also had the actual text. So we have the actual Gutters Ethiopic text. Right. R.H. Charles. I was saying his last name. R.H. Charles. Right. He also did the the Ethiopic book of Enoch or little Genesis translated from the editor's Ethiopic text. Interesting. The editors actually it was the Ethiopian Ethiopic text that the editor had available to them. And it's been edited with um, introduction notes and um, indes, in, indices or indexes, indices, right? indexes. Right. So here where it says white men, when you read the original, right, um, the Ethiopic, right, you will find that it's saying three gray hair men, right? Three gray hair men, right? This is what this part is saying right here. Let's see if they have a footer on this, right? Now here, this is one of the early translations. You see on the two is over here. It says beings who were like white men, right? Unfallen angels. Now, so when this translation came out, many of the people, it reminded me of um, Champollion. When Champollion came across the Tamahu, Right. If you ever read what Champollion said, he was the one that in um, I think Seti's it was in Seti's tomb, right, where they have the Book of Gates. Right, there's the Book of Gates, and it has some of the the nations or the main races that the ancient um, Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, right, the Kemet, the 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 people of Kemet were familiar with. Right, um, we have like the 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 Romu, the Ren, the the native Egyptians. We have the, what they call the Asiatics or the Amo, the Amu, the Amo. Amo is the term used throughout the scripture to refer to Israel, Yisrael, right? And those ones, you can see they have the full beard, they have the locks, the hair, they have the fringes and all that. And then after them, the Tanesi, the Tanesi, which some would call the blacks or the Negroes, they like the more darker skin, ones and ones, right? The Neolithic, some people say Neolithic peoples, right? That many Africans also share that, but there's the Africans that share the, the ancient Egyptian type. There are Africans that share the Asiatic type. When I say Africans, some are black people. And then lastly, you get the Tamahu, what they, some call the Tamahu, the Tamahu, Tamahu, so forth and so on. There's some 
argument on you know what the actual pointings of it is but generally speaking it's accepted as tamahu and some initially translated that as white people right and when champollion saw them he saw them clearly right as white people as indo-european people and they also appear right they appear to be indo-european people okay i'm here on this still right here but it might be better to kind of show ones who are watching the video right here to show ones what we mean here's what we're talking about right here Right, so you see right here in the Book of Gates, right? You see, um, um, Harui, 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 right? You see the one they call Horus, right? And then you see right here, right, the native Egyptians, right, right, like moving from left to right. And then you see the, what they call the Amo, the Amo, you see with the fringes over here. This is who we're talking about here. You see these people, the Amo, right, the Amo, right, and you can see part of the glyph between the men right there that's describing well who they are and then here 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 these are the amu right here right so down here on the glyphs you see going from left to right between the two men you see the ah the ah that ah and you see the main the the owl right there then it's the owl right there then over here you see the little bird right that's the oo sound the w sound the oo sound right and then we have these right here right these are like the blacks people say the blacks and so the racists Right, based on the white race and white supremacy. Whenever they, whenever you say, well, the Egyptians were black, they look at these people here, because this goes along with the stereotype, the the 400 year stereotype. Just look at any of these little, you know, these little things that they did, these little dolls and other kind of nonsense, and they say like black people, and they they look at all you know big red lips, and oh, it's crap, you know. But it was an over exaggeration right of the features you know the over exaggeration of things and it was um what do you call a stereotype was as a kind of a racist profiling right even though a lot of the people right don't really even those who are dark skinned don't conform to that stereotype that that little goofy you know i would say it's comical but it has vicious and, and wicked vindictive intent right now here's the one that champollion looked at right here these are the tamahu these are the ones he looked at right here, and he was very, very disturbed. Right? He was very disturbed by what he saw. Right? We can get into the details of what he saw, and you can actually look up what Champollion said. He's the first one to actually, one of the first, to kind of read and decipher this and explain this in his personal notes. He clearly says how it disturbed him. Right, because he finally, or from his perspective, he wants to know well, how do white people come into it. And when you look at this kind of order going from the Harui, the Horus figure, the, the bird head figure, right? And you go to those in front of him. And then so you go to the Ryan, right? You know, the, not the Ryan, the Romu, right? You go to the ancient Egyptian type, right? You go to the Rom, the Rem, Rem, Remu, Romu, Oromo, Oromo, Remu, Romu. Anyway, you go to them, those are the reddish brown. Right, men here. Then you go to the next one that they appear a little lighter in color, according to this recreation, re-illustration. We can look at the what's left of the original. Then you see the first two. Then you see the latter two right there. What's interesting about how they have the colors of these, the all three colors of the ancient Egyptians of the Amu, right? Amu one, right? This is Amu one right here. And based on this recreation, Amu two are complexions that. Hebrews and Israelites would have from the darker, including even complexions matching the Tanesi, right? The so-called Negro or the so-called black. Now remember, I say so-called because I'm referencing the reference that you can find. We're not co-signing the racist misinterpretation of things. We're seeking to try to unpack that right, by pointing out this by examples. And then we have these right here, right? And so Champollion recognized, well, this must be white people. And he writes on that and just mark that right there because we're going to hopefully, Ja will in touch on this whole book right here, the Book of Gates, right? Book of Gates, right? This is also a part of it right here. This is also a kind of a redo, a reconstruction. I know this is Lepius's, right? Or one of them um, reconstruction right here, right? This is like them going in and drawing what they saw right here. Then we also had shown this right here, which is also very interesting. Right, we see this one type right here kind of conforms a little bit to the kind of the, the Esau, right? The Esau type right there, right? But interestingly enough, he also seems to have some fringes, but he is called right here at the bottom, he is called the Am 
right? You see the first two letters is the Am, like the Amu, Amo, right? Which refer to either the people in Hebrew or his people, right? Then we have this over here. You can see over here, it's the same similar people. Now there is a slight difference. Now the colors, the recoloring, we've seen a lot of different pictures and we also looked at the actual Seti tomb, pictures from the Seti tomb of the actual monuments. And you can see that somehow somebody must have tried to destroy some things there, which is very curious. Some say it was Champollion, some say it was others around that time when they saw these different races and then they saw the Tamahu, that they were very upset about it. Or when they saw the Hebrew type, right, didn't conform, you know, to, you know, some of what they expected to see, right, they destroyed it. Or, as some would say, maybe just wore out underground, you know, hidden before the grave robbers came in to rob. Right. Either way, we have this as a point of reference right here. So we have this is the so-called Tamahu type, and this is more or less what Champollion saw. Right. He saw the Tamahu type. Right. Made white. Some people interpret it as being made white, and there's been a little controversy on what it means. Many of the scholars say, "Oh, this is the Libyans." Many of them will tell you on different scholastic point of view that this is the Libyans. That's interesting because you know that the first place that was called by the Romans, white people, Africa, was actually Tunisia. And Tunisia is right over there at the, at the capstone of the continent, right there where Libya is. Right? So Libya, they say these are the Libyans. Now it's interesting because Libona, Libona in, well, well, the, yeah, Laban in Hebrew, Laban, when you get to the root, Laban in Hebrew means white. The name actually means white. Right? It just means, it means white. <laughs> right? Not white like in a, oh, this is racist. See, we can't even talk, not we can't, but it is challenging nowadays for even us to talk about colors. Right? When we talk about colors or we call things something about colors. My, have you ever tried to call something about a color today and you begin to recognize even while you say, well, this is the identification of it, but your mind starts to think about racism or race? Now, that might not happen to everybody, but using colors, I'm speaking about colors, people are very sensitive about this because of the PTSD trauma, right, that humanity, especially those of us in the Americas and the Caribbean, but this has kind of like, the stone was like kind of dropped in the West and the waves have rippled all across this earthly plane, right, and so we all kind of, everything is kind of offset, there's not like an explosion happened. Right, after explosion, right? Some things are still standing, some structures are standing, but these structures that are still standing, because of the force of the explosion, are weakened. Right? You know, are weakened because of it. Right? So now we're trying to strengthen what needs to be strengthened or what can be strengthened and what is, you know, ready to fall, you know, or what cannot be strengthened have to be maybe torn down and rebuilt. Right? Speaking about doctrinally, you know, um, um, interpretations of things in the Bible. One of them is the table of nations in the Bible. Right? So when we say that all of them were, were black, right? some ask, well, how could all of them be black when Noah, according to Ethiopic Enoch, according to the Metzhafe Hanok, book of Hanok, book of Enoch, it says that Noah, it implies that Noah was white. Right? So now when we showed you over here, let's go over here quickly. When we showed you over here, right? you see this down here, where it says beings who were like it says white men, right? White, right? So you see over here, it says white, right? It goes back to the previous chapter there. Let's see if we can go like this, white men. And let's see if we can go. Now notice over here, I think this is this the previous? What chapter are we in? Okay, this here, you see what's at the bottom. It says, um, the one that's highlighted, Adam, I mean, Eve seeks Abel, right? Eve seeks Abel. So you see right here, it says white, white bull, another white bull, i.e. Seth. So the oldest form of Enoch, the more archaic and the, we say the original form, didn't identify the type so much, but identify it symbolically. So this use of symb symbolism that we find so used, say, by ancient Egypt and a lot of ancient civilizations, we also find this in the oldest manuscripts. So what other nations may have taken the word and drew a picture to show what they feel or were able to express this word meant in the Hebrew, these ideas were expressed um, 
um, verbally. So this is where we have coined this phrase of verbal hieroglyphs, verbal hieroglyphs. So some would take the hieroglyphs and paint out a picture, right, a word picture. The Hebrew paints word pictures, right? But now these word pictures, some translators are able to see the basic translation, Right, they can see this word is that word, this word, so going through a sentence, they can see what each word means, like literally, but now putting the context together in the, in the mind, right, there's a mind of it. It, it, like some things get lost in translation, like if somebody literally says, like, I'm going to kick your ass, and you translate that literally, a ass could be a donkey, originally it was a donkey like the jackass, the donkey. Then, later on, in some cultures or some peoples, the ass is one's backside, one's bottom, one's butt, right? You know, one's bum, as they would say. You see what I'm saying? So even when somebody says, I'll kick your ass, do they mean that they're going to kick your donkey? Now, in ancient times, I don't think they used that expression, really. Maybe they did. I haven't found any witness or testimony of it. What I'm saying here is how words are used Right? And we know when somebody says, I'm going to kick your ass, or somebody says, I'm going to uck you up, right? or you're going to get ucked up. Right? Now, that word uck also means like something else. Like, like me and her, we uck together. You know, yeah, that was a good uck. Right? And you know, it really, so the, instead of the U, it's beginning for F. You understand the word. We're not trying to be just overly, but you could get the idea. It's how we want to express this right here. Right? It doesn't always literally mean that, like, if I say to another man, Right, I'm gonna uck you up. Does it mean something homosexual? Nowadays it could. Nowadays it could be something like that. You know, maybe they're gonna have some new rules on on how we should speak since they already have the, all these new rules, right? You know, of how we should communicate. I'm saying that there is that layer of it that often is misunderstood. It's like I use the N word sometime as an example, right? If a black person say to another black person, what's up, my nigga, right? And then a white person, this has actually happened. When a black person says to another black person, what's up, my nigga, or you my nigga, or something with the N word, right? And then you hear a white person, you like want to get in on, on that. They want to get in on that. And they say the N word, or they say a N word. The controversy is already there. The witness is already there. I'm just laughing because I know some people may act, act like they don't get it. Recall a few years ago, white people were saying, and even so, still some say sometime when you get into these discussions or they come up, you know, well, it's not fear. It's not fear, right? If black people can use the N word, then it must be all right. But then some of the black people even had made the point, and it was a good point, right? That when we say it, we're saying nigga. Nigga. When y'all say it, you're saying nigger. Now, no, we're all referring to the same kind of common denominator, but now what the black people have done, right, in a sense, is take this word, right, and they express it in a slightly different way, but they embed in it a spiritually spirit of a different meaning. Now, some would say, no, it's all the same thing. Those are the people who are unspiritual about this. They don't got the spirit of it. Right? It's not the letter, right? They say it's not the letter of the law, but it's the what? Huh? The spirit of the law. Right? So pointing that out right there is to point this out right here that in the book of Enoch, right? We, we, look, this is black cows, black cows, an adjective black. They say belongs probably, right, to the bulls. So they're not really sure if it belongs to the bulls, but they see the black cows. The cows basically are the feminine, the female part, and the bull is the masculine. Did you know that? See, some people might think a cow and a bull is the same thing. They are the same thing in species, but one is the male, right, and one is the female, right? Like when they say bullshit, do you know where bullshit come from? We're going to do a whole video on bullshit. You know where the whole thing bullshit come from? Because the bulls or the, the, um, the bovines, if they say the keen, right, they, their, their defecation can be used in farming. Why, you know, from the animals, you know, the waste because the nitrates and, and, and put that in the soil when you're growing things and, and help keep the land strong and rich and, and help to grow things, the seed, right? So the, the manure of the animals are used. But you know that it's the female manure that is the best, right? It's the cow manure that's the best. So what used to happen in ancient days and times is that sometimes people would want to like sell somebody, you know, sell somebody um, like you want to buy cow manure, you know, from me. And I give you cow manure, but I cut it. You know, like, like, like they will cut it. 
It's a very interesting thing. I know some people might run off with this, but please run off with it. It's important to understand. We use the term, that's bullshit. What do you mean by bullshit? See, bullshit was instead of selling you the cow, the female manure, which was re more, more fine. The female manure was more fine. The male, the bull is the male. The male manure was rough. So what they used to do is take the rough manure of the male and cut it like into the female manure. So you think you're getting a pound of pure manure, you know, or the, 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 the cow manure, right? And actually somebody would mix up. Like mix up a little, we'll cut it with a little bit of um, the bull, the male manure. And so that's where the idea of bullshit came from. In other words, you're selling me, you're trying to give me bullshit, right? I asked to, you know, I want to buy from you this. So you're not giving me the pure, the pure thing. Like if you was doing some cocaine or trafficking or some business and you wanted to get a pure cocaine and no, they test it, they taste it. And they say it's pure or they weigh it or they do other little scientific tests test and say this is really good and say no this is not good this has been cut you know they could figure out it was cut with something else that means that you're trying to defraud somebody right in a matter of business right and those for hebrews were sins too it was a sin to defraud someone right there's a punishment for that that was unrighteous to do if you want to buy you know say the manure right and we know we all know that the manure that we use the best manure come from the cows that means it should be a hundred percent cow manure i shouldn't try to mix in like maybe 75 percent cow manure and then i put 25 percent bullshit right in it right and then when it was found out this is why they called it bullshit right so you see so I use even that right there as a form of an example here, right? Now it goes on to say the bull rendering of the sore, the sore, interesting, the word sore in the Hebrew, the sure, sure, right? Sure for the bull, sure, 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 right? This bull is Seth, right? Descendants of Seth are likewise righteous like their progenitor, right? Like their progenitor. So we can clearly see that according to Enoch, one of the, I say the oldest parts of the scripture, Right. In its present preservation, it might have had to been it had to be like re, you know, rewritten. I say rewritten, um, recopied, recopied from ancient manuscripts. This is something that has gone on because sometimes in some places, some regions. See, if it was all done in Egypt, Egypt is a dry ass country. Right. It's dry. That's why all those manuscript of Parai can can last all the time that it has. They buried it deep underground and their burial places, so forth and so on. And it's dry country. But in other places, these manuscripts will wear out because they were made from natural skins and materials and other things. And they'll wear down. And when the priest or whoever saw it wearing down, they had a duty and responsibility to copy it out and to copy it as diligently as faithful as possible. This is this is how many scriptures continue. So when sometimes they say, show us the oldest copy, they're not even putting into context, right, that copies, right, had to be made of copies when, you know, the original copies worn down. We do it today. We might have a copy of something, a picture, a document, and the document is, is falling apart. We try to tape it together, and today we just make a photocopy of it. Before, they would have to, you know, get other materials and get someone who has, a, you know, knowledge, ability to write, or however they have, an order of priests or scribes there, and they would recopy it. Right, so everywhere else other than places like Egypt. Remember, Egypt is very unique. It's a lowland place. It's a very dry ass place. So things can last for a long time. While you take those same things up the Nile to Tobia to Ethiopia to the head of the waters, where there's a lot of water and moisture in the environment and moisture and water in the environment, it affect like skins and parchment different. Right, then if you take those same skins and parchment down the Nile in a dry place. I say that because there's these silly ass arguments that you say, oh, you can't show me a manuscript going all the way back then. You can't even show me your ancestors maybe from five generations before, not, especially from our people over here and the experience we've gone through. Does that mean that you did not have ancestors by like five generations before? Right? I'm talking to black people over here in the Americas and Caribbean. Can you tell me your generation? There's only a few. I might say few, only... Maybe half of us, I will say maybe less than half of us, like over here in the Americas, some of our, like the Geechee and Gullah people, of whom my people are, the Geechee and Gullah people, the Gala, Gala, uh, I think they're maybe Oromo-like people, yeah, but anyway, they are some of the people, black people who can, uh, has, has the longest um, preservation of their genealogy, right, we can tell who our ancestors were going back um, 
um, hundreds of years, while many other black people in other parts of the country cannot really show you their ancestors going back their generation. Now, I say all this and people say, well, what does that have to do with Noah? What does that have to do with Noah? Well, it says Noah was perfect in his generation. So I'm talking about generation, 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 point here, right? They can't show you their generations going back, maybe back to their mama, maybe back to their papa, and then it begins to get great. Maybe people died, maybe they didn't think the generation, the genealogy was important, so, you know, or maybe they didn't have opportunity to record it. This is why even us today, at this generation, whatever generation you're now, you should just be curious about it, right? You know, my, I, like most ones who know who their mama is, like mama's baby, papa's maybe, right? They'll know who they're, but being perfect in a generation, this, you know who your mama and your papa is. They had fidelity, faithfulness, right? And they kept the generation proper. And then you know who your mother's mother and father is, your father's father and mother is, and so forth and so on. How many generations can you go back like that? Over here in the Americas of the Beta Israel, right, in the Americas and the Caribbean, right, the Caribbean, there's only few groups that can't. One group is the Geechee Gullah people. Now think about this for a moment. One of the reasons why the Geechee Gullah people are able to do that beyond other people is that our people, along with other indigenous people, had even fought Right, and beat the United States government, the army of the government on battlefield, right, with some of the native peoples, right? And because of all of that, they were able to maintain like portions of land in the south, the Geechee Gullah, the, the Georgia Sea Islands, other places, right, over tens and hundreds of years over here and therefore when our ancestors passed away we had our own graveyards and, and our own other places so we we, we we was able to maintain we wasn't moved right we was able to it's like the israelites in egypt some of them were able to go to places like goshen and were able to keep their lineage while there were others that may have got lost in the source right but we had a community right and we fought to establish that community. We was able to kick back, knock back, touch back the enemy, white supremacy, a little bit, right? In order for us to have a little so we can articulate who we are as a people. And I mention all that because that has a lot to do with things when we read things in the Bible about perfect in his generations, that Noah was perfect in his generations. Isn't this interesting? So that means even if, right, Right, according to Enoch, Noah was an albino, right, amongst otherwise melanated people, right, that his genealogy wasn't like other people's genealogy of the time. It wasn't hybrid. Remember at the time there was the 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 Cain, the Cain line, which I call the 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 um um Cain links with the Anunnaki. I want to point that out. The Cain lineage and Nod and, and Nod and all that links with the Anunnaki. Right, which was a fallen civilization of Nephilim, right? Right, based on our studies, we're gonna bring that out, and when we bring that out, I right? just want to point that out to the fact. But then you have the Seth line, right? The Seth lineage, right? Up until the time of Noah was maintaining, right? The, the the lineage that you know, father and son, father and son. In other words, one not breeding out of right the lineage or breeding into their DNA lineage any questionable, right, any other questionable seed, any other questionable DNA. So this shows that ancient peoples were concerned about DNA too. Maybe they didn't call it DNA, DNA, right? Or maybe they call it DMA. And maybe we have to re-scramble the DMA and we have ADM, Adam, because they kept their genetics, they were able to keep consistently their genetics, right, from the patriarch. And they knew of the line of Cain, right? The line of, you know, we had those of the highlands. Seth was of the highlands, right? The highlands. And the highlands was considered more heavenly because it was closer to the, to the firmament. And then you had those of the lowlands, right? The lowlands. That's why I talk about the daughters of the children of men. The daughters of the children of men, right? And then you had those who were like unto the children of God, the Seth lineage. Why were they like unto the children of God? Because Adam is a son of God. 
According to Luke, it says that Adam and Adam, son of God. So Adam was a son of God. And those children that were consistent with his testimony, right, through the lineage of Seth, it would have been Abel. But Abel, in a sense, becomes the, the typology for the Osiris. But then they add different things to that according to their culture, so forth and so on. So just in presenting this right here, right, just to get a basic context, we can go a little bit longer on this, but it is important to understand what's going on. Right now, let's get to this right here, right, if we can now. We have the actual text and some of the better translations. This was back in the maybe 18, what was it, the 1800s? All right, let me look at this right over here. Yeah, it was originally like the yeah the 1800s coming to the early turn of the century. So like the the 19th to the 20th century, right? So the 1800s to the 1900s when this came forward, right? But in looking at the original text, as we showed, well, we basically told you, now we're going to have to show you by going into the Gutas, right, to the Ethiopic. Now, the Qumran scrolls too, we're going to follow up on that. The Qumran scrolls basically mirrors, right, a lot of what the Book of Jubilees and the Book of Enoch already said. And the Book of Jubilees and Enoch from the Israelites of Ethiopia testimony is more extant. When I say extant, it's more complete, it's more full. In the Qumran scrolls, they have portions and fragments of it, right? And they, what they do, the, the, the Jews and the other scholars today, you know, nowadays today is that they compare and contrast. And if you know anything about linguistics, it's easy to go from, how can we say, it's easy to go from, say, say, Gutas, right, to Hebrew and from Hebrew to Gutas. It's, it's very interesting. It's, it's, it's very easy to go from one language to the next language, almost like going from, like, say, Italian, right, in a sense, to Latin on, on a certain level. That's not the best example, but that's a basic example right there. Right. So when it speaks about Noah being white, right, right here, let's see if we can get to this part right here. Now, this is in this translation, right, as you already seen another white bull right there. So we see the symbology, black bull, right, white bull, right, white bull. Right. So the, the term even white, right, the term white had nothing to do with what we nowadays have been wrestling with this whole white supremacy white racism and white supremacy it's like this right here which says beings who were like white men right beings who like white men when i i saw this here i immediately went to the scrolls and i saw that the white men were gray-haired men right were like ancients were gray-haired men so when it said white man it should have said we're like gray-haired men Right, well, like gray haired men, like elders, the connotation is elders there. Well, gray hair to say wise men, like the whiteness of the, the, the hair. It wasn't talking about that they were white to say Europeans or white people as we know today. Oh, that brings me to something else right here, being to like white men. And then the, here they try to give an interpretation. They were like unfallen angels as men are represented by animals. The unfallen angels are naturally represented by men. Right, and it says white, and then it refers to a previous area. But when you look at the terminology used in the scripture, right, you'll see that terminology used in the scripture sometimes is gray haired men. It's gray haired men. What is used for Noah, right, is clearly he was an albino based on the context. He was an albino, right, to that white bull. Like you see the white bull right there. Now, some say, oh, that's the white man, right? See, they are interpreting it through the spectacles of white racism and white supremacy. So if you can begin to see outside of those spectacles that 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 was this this is pointing to testimony of, say, 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 five to, to five to ten thousand years ago. I'm going to say that we can back that up five to ten, a very old period of time. Right, this is going back to a very old period. Conservative speaking, people say like five or so thousand within that range right there. Right, and that's long before white people were able to insert their their psychological viruses. It was psychological viruses that they put into. Right, and when we start to get to the root of what we're talking about, we can maybe understand how psychologically. Right? How and why the so-called racist white man, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, why and how he did that, right? 
I'm not justifying it. I'm just saying in order to know the truth. Like I can understand something and say, yeah, I understand. But it doesn't mean that I agree that it's true. You know, like I understand the devil's a liar. You, you, you see what I'm saying? But the, but, but by understanding that devil's a liar, you said, do you understand the devil's a liar? I said, yeah. Oh, so, so, so you, 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 you agree with the lie. No, I, I said, I understand the devil's a liar. All right, see, so understanding and agreement is two different things, right? Trying to understand how somebody's making a point. Like, you might understand how I'm making a point, but you might not agree with this point right here. You might really say that, that Noah was a white man. Then, if he's a white man in the sense of latter-day white man, right, you got to explain a few things. One of the things that it would be important, there we go right there, let's see, born, another one born a white a white bull let's see if it has anything down here with born a white bull right just to get to the part in the older translation where it talks about noah you know what we can do right here let's just look up noah let's see if we can just go to noah right here just in the time that we have we, we want to sort it's like sort the scripture right right to sort out the scripture okay the fragment of noah now even enoch is made from fragments of others others kept notes and records so this idea of ancient people keeping records is nothing new. And then an ancestor comes along, right, and sorts it out. Like I have family that keeps genealogical records, right? And some people would go to like being the younger descendant would go to the grandma, the grandpa, sit down and, and interview them and maybe write. Or they may have notes and you take that back in the days, take the old Bible of the family. And then whoever was able to take the whole Bible of the family and the Bible was all of the who begat, who begat, who begat. Right. And then you put it together and then you hear narratives or things that happened to your elders and ancestors from your parents and the grandparents and you write it down. Now, people will credit you with the writing, but you basically took the fragments. Right. And the testimonies of others. And then you also now testify to what you witness in your time. So it's a combination of those before you in your lineage you right and then if you're a prophet or if you're given inspiration right you would add that there moving forward now because now this will be passed on to your descendants this is what we have in the scriptures generally speaking and this is what we have in um you know this is what we have in 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 in, in, in enoch right you know in enoch for example right by that name that son enoch a derivation enoch Right, let's go into this Enoch right here and let's go white as snow. I think the phrase here is white as, well, white as, let's go put snow here. We had saw it before. We're using, sorry, we're using this PDF right here. Um, give it a moment. But we like to, okay, white as snow. Maybe we have to make it literal words white as snow. It might be white like snow. Right, we don't recall exactly white as snow. Well, I think it's white as snow, but it might be white like snow. Right, white like snow. Let's try like right here. Right, we just saw it before we went on to do the video right here. Right, let's see if it brings this out right here. We might have this go through white. You know, you know. Let's let's go through snow. Snow might not show up so many times in the scripture. Now you see what they just did. They put now so th th this is not a very good search right here right but if you bear with me maybe we'll put on pause right okay right here look it says and the glory the great glory sat there on and his raiment shone more brightly than the sun and was whiter than any snow right so it's about his garment was whiter than any snow right right here it says white like snow compared with daniel chapter 7 verse 9 right let's go over here right snow or well, some snow snow Right, regular snow, the spirit of the snow he let he has let go. Right, faces shone. Look, it says, Their garments were white and their raiment and their faces shone like snow. Now, ones will say, Well, well, what about um, like Yeshua? Here's what some people say that Noah was white. There's a doctrine out there. I just saw a video of this guy, it's an interesting video. He proposes that you know, Egypt, uh, like in Egypt was really where Israel was, like a whole different orientation geographically. Some interesting points he made, but then I noticed one big point was that he said that Jesus Christ was born like, like Noah, like white as snow or something like that. There's no testimony of that, but I don't know where he got that from. But when he mentioned like Noah, I said, Oh, he is looking at no doubt one of the translations of Enoch. It says that faces shone like snow 
right? Their faces shone like snow. Does this mean that they are white? Right? Does it, you know, we talk about one shine, shine. You know, black people, we use that phrase a lot, shine. In fact, you know how when we use that phrase shine, right? It's like the opposite of it is like being dusty or ashy skin, right? So what I'm trying to say by this is that to try to say that this means that these people became white now because their garments were bright, right? It's speaking about some sort of illumination where they're so illuminated, right, that the light, you know, like, like you, you can shine a bright light, bright enough light on somebody black that you do not, what you're going to notice is the shine, right, the shine. This is not to say that they are white. But some people, if they suffer the virus, then, you know, then they're looking for grasping at any straws, Right, because what it said, it said that the cover up, right, is worse than the lie, right. The cover up is worse than the lie, right. Um, and now they've already lied against black people. I'm talking about the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. You know, they already lied, right. And the black people are, are ham, and 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 we are cursed. And, and and when ham was a white man, they actually say, they actually say the racist white supremacists. If you can find those documents, that all of them were born white. That Ham, Shem, and Japheth were all white, and that only only Ham, right, became black after the incident that's written in the Bible. Now, if I don't know if any of you have ever seen those writings in some of the white Christians and Jews misinterpretations of the Bible, they actually say that right there. Right now, it begins to make more sense why they talk about the curse of Ham. Coming from their perspective, they believe that that everyone was white, right? And that was only Ham that became the black man, right? But the the truth is actually the one hundred and eighty degree diametrical opposite that everyone was melanated. That is to say, in the general today's language, they were black or melanated people, right? Now we have this particular exception right here, where it says in chapter one hundred and six, and after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech and she became pregnant by him. She became with child by him right, and bore a son and his body was white as snow and red as a blooming rose. Now you see when it says red, it's talking about ruddy, right? White and ruddy, right? In other words, he wasn't just ruddy, reddish brown, dark reddish brown, we could say melanated black, but there's a difference of his complexion. Right, there's a difference of look. It says, and the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool. Notice something. What it says right here. It didn't say it was white like blonde hair. It didn't say it was white like um, something else that people might use racially to uh, infer like white peopleism. Right. It says that his hair and his long locks were white as wool. Stop for the moment right there. How do you see that? It was white as wool. Now we got to look at wool. What is wool? What does wool look like? Remember how we were talking about idioms and phraseology and, and ways that people use language? It's like a group of people when they talk to each other, right? They, they use words because they know each other so they can talk in some way. So they may say some things that when I hear, I'm like, what? I'm interpreting it the way I think about it. But amongst them, they use this word or a series of words in a certain way. So white as wool. Right? Is white people, what do you know about white people? White like wool. Just answer that right there. Is white people's hair white as wool? Just generally speaking, do you just, have you come across just white people's hair, which is white like wool? The like wool part is the interesting, as wool part, that's the interesting. And his eyes, beautiful. Is it saying that his eyes were blue? Is only blue eyes beautiful? Think about it for a moment. It's not saying any of that there, but because of now, remember the earlier quote in chapter 80 something concerning the three white men. So now certain white scholars translating this and others reading this, no doubt, you know, had come to certain um, conclusions. What's down here says as wool. You see at the bottom right there as wool. Right. And he, he opened his eyes and he lighted up the whole house like the sun. And the whole house was very full of light. Now, now, are we looking at this literally that when he opened up his eyes, like it was dark, but the light was coming from his eyes? Right? This is how it sounds. But then it can also be this child was so, like as an albino child, it was such a, such a, like, it was, it was like light. You see, there's a, there's a descriptive way in language where it does not always speak literally. 
Now, if you want to say it's literally, it still does not say he's a white man. You know, since when has you seen some white man, white child, and this is what happened? This is not, only in the movies has happened like that. But the contrast between the people being melanated and now, you know, being in other words, black people and this child being born so opposite, right, as we would say of that, that's what an albino is. This is why we started out with the albino example. There was a good page I wanted to go to to share something right there with you. But then there was something that I had found some some time ago and I had shared some time ago that I'd like to share with you. Just um, let's just pause for the cause. All right. All right. All right. So here, here, here. Finally able to find this one here again. So this um, might be 20, almost almost 20 years, might be 15 it's more than 10, I'll definitely say about within 10 plus years ago. We had this in the video as well. We touched on this some years ago. But here, hopefully better to present this evidence right here. Here it says European skin. So I'm not like white. Well, European skin. And let's just say it as it is. Read as it. European skin turned pale only recently. Gene suggests. So there's a gene, they're saying to us right here, there's a gene that suggests, based on, you know, their scientific knowledge and gnosis, there's a gene that suggests, right, that white people, right, or no, that Europeans, let's, let's, let's look at it how they say, Europeans, like we always like try to argue that, well, actually, when they say European, we shouldn't always think of European to mean white, we do under racism, white supremacy, under the mindset, but it doesn't mean that. And when you say white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you think, well, if there's white Anglo-Saxon, couldn't they be black? And then we look at archaeology, we look at certain evidence, we look at certain documents too. Like, like what's it called? Mackey? Mackey? There was a special agent back in the 18, I think 17, or way back there. Um, Brother Lee Cummings works. Heal up Lee Cummings. Like to heal up Lee Cummings works and also the works of others that have found a lot of this evidence and presented it to us. But here it says that European skin turned pale only recently. That means the Europeans were not pale. You see what I mean? So of European skin, if we say African skin only turned black recently, only turned dark recently. That would suggest, right, that actually African skin was something else and then it changed into what we see today, right? So just to point that out. So I'm going to just share this article right here. If we touch on the first part of it, right, right here, researchers have disagreed for decades about an issue that is only skin deep. But we ask, is this issue really only skin deep? Is it really? I mean, we like to say that, you know, from our perspective as black people, right, as the Beta Israel, right, and our perspective as we say melanated people, and I just testify I as one, yeah, I didn't hear just speaking. Um, is it only, we might think naturally, you know, just naturally, black people, we, we like, well, why are they doing this to us? Because we are black? You know, it doesn't, it never made sense to us. It never made sense to any other people except Europeans. It only makes sense to white people for them to do to us because of our skin color, you know, because every all the evidence that we see, they don't say, oh, we did something to them. Most white people don't say, oh, the reason why we had to do to white people, I mean, black people, what they did, you know, the reason why we had to treat them the way we treated them is because they did something to us, all right? The question has been there and the question still is, why did they do what they did to black people? And because most white folks and, and their system, the systemic people, the people who should be answering, the people who actually did it on behalf of the other white people who didn't really do it, but the other white people basically allowed it to have been done. And then later on, when black people started to say, hey, this is too much and started to fight against it, it encouraged some of the white people who were not down with, you could say, the, the racism in the sense of they were the doers of it. Right, and then complicit to become somewhat uncomplicit in fighting against it. But then even there, they try to make it sound like, well, it is the abolitionists, it's white people who freed us up, and we were just along for the ride, that we never resisted it, we never fought against it, we never tried to stop it, we had to wait until some white people's hearts were so moved, right? And then with their hearts so moved, then we started to say, you know, we could rise up then. And even that there shows the, um, um, the, uh, the, the innate, you know, the dis-ease, right? That really shows right there, you know, the dis-ease right there. 
Because how in the world are they going to say that even in the reality of things? Any people who are being treated a way... We, We've been resisting almost since day one. Not when I say we, there's been those of us resisting since day one, right? Somewhat unsuccessfully, but have been resisting. Even a Nat Turner is one example historically, right? So I pause here at the skin deep point because word to God that was so. We might say it's so. We might even do the science and tech, you know, DNA and look at that and say the, the difference we see between white and black peoples is only skin deep. And it's like we the victims or our people of we the descendants of the victims. Let's put it right. We the descendants of the victims who have been victimized by this evil, by this hurt, by this ill, this unkindness, this inhumanity. We're making excuses. Oh, it's only skin deep. Masa, 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 don't you know the difference between me and you, Masa? It's only the skin deep, Masa. That's the only get difference between us is that it's the skin deep. What do you think will happen? Nigga, please, shut the... So it shows that even though we present that argument, right, and our ancestors, no doubt, and even factually speaking, have presented arguments similar to that in the so-called white racist, white supremacist, and white accomplices right because many white people say that their ancestors had nothing to do with it okay and we we researched that and we said okay yeah it was a certain percent percent of white people who really were behind that but so your your people were complicit <laughs> you were complicit the same way we talk about some of the africans or black people in the continent right that it wasn't their tribes and their people that ended up here but the other ones were complicit right you know they had some so that's being non-partial that means we can look at some black people in the content and recognize that some of them were involved. Hell, we even know that some of our own people were involved. <laughs> Let me put it like that. Right? Some of our own that's why we have laws like that in Torah. Some of our own people, like if if a if um like a slave or somebody who's running away from their master is found in our hand. You know, and that's usually speaking about like another nation, like a other nation. If somebody from another nation was enslaved, runs on amongst us, amongst Israel, we are not to, you know, we basically to kind of protect them on a certain level, as long as they're not some morally, you know, degenerate on some level. If they're moral degenerate, then that's basically against our whole premise, right? But if they're just a person and they've been abused by somebody else over there, we're to show some protection. Uh, yes, we do have our own service and servants and people who have to work off debts and everything like that. We have an economic system as well. It, it happens today. You go to court and they say you owe this money, you know, you're on probation, you know, and they also give you opportunity to work off certain debts in different ways. Depends on the law and the legal system. But I just want just to touch on that whole skin deep thing for a moment, right? With us, to make the distinction with us, black and brown people, yes, it's only skin deep. Yes, with us. It's only skin. Well, let's put it like this. Then it was skin deep. Some of us are beginning to reanalyze this. Even some of my fellow Hebrews were like, brothers, you know, one of them wants to be reasoned on this. And it's like, yeah, 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 true. Could we recognize that? Yeah, from our perspective, it's only skin deep. But from their perspective, damn, what, what the hell? All right. Exactly. <laughs> la Zazel. La Zazel. You know what I mean? Ma La Zazel. Ma La Zazel. And like, what the hell? Yeah, it is what the hell. It's something from hell. It's something that's like out of this world. When we really look at it, right? And even when we get flustered and say, we're going to then and take and slay, then the white people go to slave. Yeah. Even if that were so, it would be 180 degrees different. Of course, when we start to think about what they did to our people, right? It becomes a little different thing, right? But generally speaking, when we were arguing, when our ancestors was arguing and trying to, like pleading, let's put it like that, pleading, Right. Right. Um, the white man and and the white men who were actually doing it to our people and the other white people who wasn't owners of slave on slave Hebrews and Israelites and black people. They basically went along with it. And no matter of skin deep, even some of the abolitionists, black and white, had that argument. And still that argument didn't work, you know, pre Civil War. Now, today, of course, people say that was then, that was in the past, and now this is a new day. Well, we can, we can take that up. But here it says, how quickly did the first modern humans who swept into Europe acquire pale skin? So you see that right there where it says right here? It says, how 
how let's bring that down how quickly did the first modern humans who swept into Europe acquire pale skin now a new report on the evolution of a gene for skin color suggests that Europeans lighten up quite recently uh oh Europeans lighten up so that means before Europeans lighten up Europeans were darkened up that means before Europeans turned what we can call white they were black and that if there is any evolution that we can clearly point to and should be agreeable based on the evidence and the reality is that there's the evolution, right, genetically, right, of what people can call skin color or quote slash race. You know, that, that becomes very tricky, especially when we're dealing with white supremacy. When we talk about race, white supremacy, with white supremacy, we're dealing with a lot of lies, right, straight up lies. And a lot of people don't want to admit and accept that that's a lie and put a lie where a lie should be put, right, in the trash and dismiss it. But sometimes my reason for ones want to throw in a white supremacist lie and not even know it's a white supremacist lie, right? They actually believe it's just the point that they saw. No, the point you saw was a point that was put there for you until you really start to look at the evidence and even question your own perspective and say, where's the facts? You're like, where's the evidence? Not just to find the evidence that backs up what you want to think, but look at what evidence is truly evident. It, that is evident. What is evident? All right? Perhaps 6,000 to 12,000 years ago. This contradicts a long-standing hypothesis that modern Europeans in Europe grew paler about 40,000 years ago. You see that when it's in the first part of the article? As soon as they migrated into northern latitudes, under dark... Under darker skies, pale skin absorbed more sunlight under right, darker skies than dark skin, allowing ultraviolet rays to produce more vitamin B, vitamin B for bone growth and calcium absorption. Quote, the light skin or the evolution of light skin occurred long after the arrival of modern hum humans in Europe. Molecular anthropologist Heather Norton in, of the University of Arizona, um, uh, uh, Tucson, Tucson, that's how they said Tucson, said in her talk, right? There's more in this particular article right here, but just to bring this out right here, lighten up a gene for pale skin swept through Europeans relatively recently. Now, even this particular article here, which is an interesting article, is still written with the, uh, it has a little less of the virus, but the virus is still there. And we can actually get into the, the proof of it, and hopefully we can just zoom in on, like, like do a vlog just on this right here. But we'll have to bring in other evidence. So the truth of the matter is that the first Europeans were black people. Right after we get the curse, the consequences of Canaan and the whole Edomite and Canaan connection and the history that occurred in Far East Africa, the so-called Middle East, and so forth and so on, and the Caucasus Mountains, we had other groups of people come in later on. So it's like in America. First, there were the native people that were over here, the reddish brown, black, reddish brown people, melanated people over here called Indians or Native Americans. Then you get way after that some Europeans who come over here as colonists, pilgrims, or whatever, right? and you get them taking over the land like we get in Australia. The same thing for Australia. So the same thing happened in Europe as happened in Australia as happened in America. You had darker skinned, melanated peoples over there that we can put as they have even put us all in the black category. And then we get some white folks, people who are not, come over, right? And there's a war, or not, not war, war, but there's basically them either exterminating the people as we get the Tasmanian people. We get a whole people exterminated. Can you see anywhere where black peoples have exterminated another group of people? You see, so we just want to point out it's not the same, right? It is not the same when people be trying to say, oh, it's all the same and everything like that. No, that is, that is like I said, the cover up being, being um, you know, worse than the lot. So this was the article right here, just for you to see it. And maybe you can research it and find it out there. European skin, right? Turned pale only recently. Now look at... Look at the picture right here. We have the picture of this, um, this, this, uh, I would think it's a woman. I, you know, I, just, I just assume it's a woman. I'm not too sure. This is kind of interesting because sometimes we look at some African pictures, right, of some tribes. And if this is a close up, we might think it's this or that. But then you have to see the more full body. Just uh, it's how people are, right? You know, there are differences, of course, male and female. But we can't really tell if we think it's a woman. 
We just say we think it's a woman, right? But notice her hair. Is her hair, let's zoom in right here. Is her hair, is her, is, is, or let's say it like this, like they do nowadays. Is there here? <laughs> is there here? Right? You know what I mean? You know, give a, give a little gender neutral because I'm not really too sure about this picture right here, right? Is there here? Right? The person's here, right here, right here, here, here. Is there here? White like snow? They here is blonde. So when you see some people saying, Noah was white man, Noah had Noah's white man and his hair was blonde, right? I just showed you even from their translation where they still are inaccurate with the white in its proper context, but it's there in some of the early translations of Enoch, right? Let's bring this up here. This is an interesting page. I was gonna focus more on like I started out with this right here, right? On the medium dot dot com the book of enoch black adam albino noah and the image of god black adam albino noah and the image of god like to just address this particular article from what we perused scanned over a uh, hail up to dante fortson right the b-h-i-t-b -B, podcaster let's see right here we don't want to get the app right now why is this thing coming up here Right, continue in mobile. I'll continue in mobile. We could probably get the app. Yeah, it'd be good for us. Anybody that can build an app for us for LOJ for the line of Judah, you know, please link at lojs.org. Right, so just the first part of this here the book of Enoch, Black Adam, Albino Noah, and the image of God, the image of Elohim. Was everyone on the planet black before Noah's flood? The book of Enoch seems to indicate that the world before Noah's flood was much was was a much darker place as far as melanin is concerned well said well said dante while the book of enoch is not considered canon official scripture by the western gentile whitewashed churches we should say that as well when he's about, oh this is canon that is canon they only are telling you this from the latter-day gentile white people's perspective because christianity or what's called christianity gets broken into two different Two different. It's almost like what happened between Esau and Jacob. We see this in, in Christianity. So there's the Jacob Christianity, Jacobite, right? Belief in the Messiah, right? More of the Judaic, the true root, right? And then and then we have, right, the Esau, the Edomite version, which is the popular version. But let's go on. While the book of Enoch is not considered a canon official scripture, it was very important to the ancient Hebrews, yes, and the ancient Ethiopian Hebrews and the ancient Israelites of Ethiopia. In fact, it was so important that they hid it among the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran. Let's start by looking at the story concerning Noah's birth. Now, most ones know that we take the perspective, we put the Ethiopic um, witness might give it priority over the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls are for people who don't want to believe the Ethiopic, the Israelites of Ethiopia testimony. You know, those who don't want to, those who raise the eyebrow because the white man that raised the eyebrow. How are these black people who claim Israelite link and Israelite connection, why do they have these ancient scriptures that we only heard about? Why do they have it? They have all these ancient scriptures. Well, is it really true? Well, those are black people. You know, they had their racism, their scientific academic racism. But they, they liked the fact that the Ethiopians had these scrolls. They went through them and translated them. But then there's a lot of misgiving that these so-called white scholars had about it. Right. And it wasn't just the usual misgiving that a scholar will have. They find a lot of truth and say, wow, this is amazing. This is this is this is the truth. But do, can we really rely on it because it was Ethiopian? You know what I'm saying? This bias against the Ethiopian. We can go, go all the way back to the biblical narrative. It was there with one of our own, with Miriam. Miriam had the same bias that Moses, Moshe didn't have the same bias. Like some Israelites has a bias against the children of the Ethiopians, right? And the Israelites of Ethiopia. But some of us, right, as Israelites don't have that bias. Right? So that's something that we're going to have to address as well. But here it goes here. Here he is quoting from the Qumran scrolls. This is why we found his work to be interesting here. Because we would go to the Ethiopic scrolls. The first place we wanted to go to and we went to was the R.H. Charles translation. One of the older translations. One thing we like about R.H. Charles, even though he has that dubious white man there, it's not really white men. It's really um, aged men or gray hair. The, the white is referring to their hair. 
right? There's a way we have a word like in the Bible says, and the hoary head, the hoary head, hoary, H-O-A-R-Y in King James Version. That means the gray headed, right? The gray headed, right? And to respect the gray headed, right? To say that elders. After a time, this is from the, the Qumran, right? After a time, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech. She became pregnant by him and brought forth a child, the flesh of which was at, as white as snow and red as a rose, the hair of whose head was white like wool and long. Now remember, this is, this is the Qumran. We, there's a suspicion among some of us that some of the Qumran documents were just kind of rewritten in Hebrew, right? Rewritten in Hebrew from the Ethiopic. We have, there's that suspicion there that some of the scholarship is not being completely honest with themselves or with the world, right? But because this basically reads the same as the Ethiopic. Now, if it's truly is from some ancient scrolls and it's not what some of us think might have happened, then it even is more proof. It says, when he opened them, right, and, and whose eyes were beautiful, when he opened them, he illuminated the house. You see, it's slightly different, but it's bringing out the same sense. Like the sun, the whole house abounded with light. And when he was taken from the hand of the midwife, opening also his mouth, he spoke to the Lord of righteousness, to Ha'adon, to the Adonai Tzedek, you know, Tzedek. Right, Tzedek, right? Then Lamech, his father Abiyo, was afraid of him and flying away, came to his own father Methuselah. Look what it says, flying away. Do we think he literally flew away? No, just a minute, he, he jetted, right? And said, I have begotten a son unlike to other children. He is not human, but resembling the offspring of the angels of heaven. Now, this is interesting. If he's albino, what do the, ah, uh, is of a different nature from ours, being altogether unlike to us. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 105, verses 1 to 3, right? The colored elephant in the room. These three verses in the book of Enoch provide a glimpse into what was going on around the world at the time of Noah, Noah's birth. In order to make this easier, we're going to break down the information into two sections, right? And so what the text says, Noah was born with white skin. Noah did not look like the other humans. Lamech believed Noah was the son of an angel. Angels were having children on earth, right? This is based on Dante Fortson's breakdown. What the text implies, one, white skin was not common among humans. Two, the children of the angels, Nephilim, were white. Although the Nephilim plays a very important role in Noah's flood, they are beyond the scope and focus of this article. If you are interested in an in-depth study of the Nephilim and Noah's flood, please check out my book. So he has a book, As the Days of Noah What? The Sons of God and the Coming Apocalypse. We'd like to check out his book and we're promoting this right here. You know, um, we don't, we're not promoting what's in it because we haven't read it. But based on what he's saying here, we're very interested in it. If humans weren't white, what color were they? The text seems to imply that pre-flood humans were people of color, right? To say not white people, but people of color, right? Different shades of melanin. Based on the location of the Gan Ba'ed in the Garden of Eden, they were most likely brown or dark-skinned people. And we would just add to that based on the scriptures and the old use of the Hebrew, reddish brown people, right? Or of dark skin, black skin people. If you aren't, if you still aren't convinced that pre-flood people were people of color, Lamech's words, quote, being altogether unlike to us, end quote, proves everything, that everything about Noah was different, including his skin color. Noah, the black albino. Although Noah was described as having white skin, quote unquote, we know that not only Europeans have white skin, black people can also be born with white skin. We refer to these, these people or these types of people as albinos. Here are a few pictures of black people with white skin. So as we can see right here, let's just bring this up right here. We have this right here, the two on top, and then we have the two on bottom right here. All right, black people. All right, black people. Now, notice right here, black people. All right, yeah. Now, notice when we talk about wool, it's being the texture of the hair. 
right? That's the key thing right there that once again links that Noah was an albino, right? White as wool, not blonde, blonde hair, blue eye like a white man, right? See, they leave out those parts, the as wool part, right? Um, as we can clearly see, white babies are not only born to Europeans. In fact, it is a scientific fact that black people can have white children, what we call today white children. Because remember, the black and the white as we use it today is because of white racism, and white supremacy. So in a way of trying to get us out of this, we have to use terminology like this, try to explain it, put it in context, and hopefully move on for higher consciousness. But white people cannot have a black child. Facts. Mm. Let, let, let that sink in for a moment right there. That, that point right there, the scientific aspect, how it proves the biblical and the book of Enoch, the scriptural aspect should be like, all right, that's the truth of the matter. The white people are here, right? And we know that they came from black peoples. That should be just like settled, right? But because of white racism and white supremacy is not settled. Some people who might say they're not racist, they're just about the truth of the Bible, they still are spouting forth these misconceptions of white racism and white supremacy. But here's what the scripture says, and here with Dante Fortson really broke it down succinctly there, right? The only way for all the races to exist on the planet, we believe it's an earthly plane, but be that as it may, is if they started dark and then became lighter over time. This is what we were saying 20 years ago, and many ones, I guess, they still were wrestling with the lower levels of white racism, white supremacy, right? Wrestle, wrestling these misconceptions, misinterpretation, all this. Enoch, Lamech, Noah were all from the lineage, the line of Seth, Adam's third son. If they were people of color, it also indicates that, not, that Seth, right, was a man of color, which would also make Adam Adam, even Hebrew, Hebraically, his name, reddish brown like the ground, right? Adam means reddish brown like the ground, right? Get that right there. That's a black complexion. That's a shade of Adam, a man of color, right? So Adam, the first man of color, I would say, according to the biblical order of things, the revelation, Adam, a man of color, right? For starters, Genesis 2 and 7 tells us Adam was created from the dust, the afar of the Adama. In fact, the, the, the ground is called Adama, Adama, the reddish brown. That's what Adam means, reddish brown like the ground. In the Mesopotamian region where the, the Gan, the garden, right, was located, all of the soil is colored. However, I'll readily admit that it isn't a very strong argument. The strongest argument for Adam being black are the three verses above, right? Um, I get what he's saying here, but it, it, it is a it is an argument. There's a strength to the argument. I would say that the argument concerning Adam and the Adama, the reddish-brown ground, is not strong enough among most of those who argue it, right? We have been arguing from a strong position, so strong a position that most ones, you know, they just say it's wrong, but it can't prove it's wrong, so and so on. But little by little, we see ones are returning to this point of view and bringing out more substantiation. There's more substantiation that's being brought out. Right. For example, let's see right here. I know this is a full of full right here. Right. But let's go over here. So we already show this particular article right there. European skin turned pale. Right. Only recently. So let's get out of this right here. And there is um, a couple of pages we like to show. Right. Let's see if we can get it over here. We were looking for that particular um, pick right there. Um, that exhibit, let's put it like that, that exhibit. Let's see if we can bring this up. It should be in this section right over here. We go right here. Boom. Have you seen this? And give that, oh, that is same, it's the same brother. Thank you, Dante Fortson. Right? He's been putting in this work right here. Right? Um, saw this kind of later on after we were speaking about it, but still the point is being brought out. That's what's important. Ruddy skin tones. Ruddy. Right? Adomni. The word in Hebrew is Adomni, and it comes from the Adam, the Aleph, Dalet, the Mim root in Hebrew, right? This also right here. King David is described as ruddy, right? The color, the color of these four images are ruddy in color. Isn't that interesting? All of these images are ruddy in color. So what sort of complexion would Adam have had, right? We see this over here, right? Two different kinds of, we could say, ruddiness or rednesses, right, defined. Right, right there, right? White Edomites, it's interesting right there, right? 
So we have that over there. Now, this is a view that some of the Israelites think when they say ruddy, right? When Adam and, and Esau and so forth and so on, he came out red all over like a hairy garment. That is that particular argument. And this is even where amongst us that argument is being challenged. Right. So here we have ruddy skin versus pale skin. There's a big difference or white skin, as one may say. Right. And this is also a kind of interesting comparison. So was Esau like one of those white men when he was born as a twin? He was a twin of Jacob. Or was he more like this man right here? Right. This imagery right here of Esau. Right. Even Detroit Red. That's what they used to call Malcolm X. You ever see, actually seen the pictures of Malcolm X, the color pictures of Malcolm X. Right. So this is the perspective that we're representing over here, looking at the gene pool, so forth and so on. Some other very interesting kind of relations between so-called white people. When we say that white people come from Ham right, or Ham or we can even say Kemet in the biblical use of that. Right, so that was the that was the exhibit that we sought to show. Right, that's the exhibit we sought to show right there. Um, the closest, okay, this is one way of some people say this is how how Edom, right, the Edomites look. We point this more right here to the Edomites and the Canaanites when the Edomites mix with the Canaanites. Right, that's that's a, that's a big part that most haven't really seen the significance of that right there so then from some of the archaeology we kind of use this as a kind of a point of reference right to how the ancients pictured people right according to the uh, kind of um word picture and then how the bible the torah also pictures one according to the word picture but here for right now let's leave on the screen this part right here from Dan dante uh dante fortson because he is making a very good argument here we like to go through that article in and of itself, right? But just a couple of more uh, highlights and exhibits right here. So Noah was white and other humans were not. They were likely brown or dark skinned. If the humans were brown or dark skinned, it wouldn't have, it would it would have, it would have, would have been passed down from Adam. If brown or dark skin was passed down from Adam, it would mean that Adam was most likely brown or dark skin. So he's taking the kind of scholastic, academic, you know, kind of argument view of that. These are reasonable conclusions based solely on the text presented. That brings us to the most controversial conclusion to where the evidence leads to. And the evidence here leads to the image of God, right? The image of Elohim. This is the particular point that um, Dante Fortson here in his article is making. We are constantly bombarded with images of a God, a white God, or a white Christ, Messiah. But why is that? If race doesn't matter and God is just a spirit without race, why is he always depicted as white and not black or Arab or even Asian? Right? And here is the highlight verse, Bereshif, Genesis 1, verse 26 to 27. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have, let them have, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image and in the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he them now there's probably some more to this article let's see right here i think we let's see how much more let's just finish this article right here we almost finished right if elohim aka quote god made man in his image his own image and after his likeness what would that man look like he would look like elohim like god right many people try to downplay the appearance of elohim by saying that elohim is a spirit well man is in the image man has spirit soul and body so we know that elohim is a spirit right we know that elohim has a soul so now here this is actually proving that elohim has a body right or when he has a body how he manifests in the body right which means he doesn't have a body so when people look at that verse they're like well robeno says in the new covenant when he's speaking to people like us who are already melanated right so we who are already melanated we already have that aspect Right, the the least aspect, that carbon organic aspect, right? Now we need to recognize the 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 root aspect. So Elohim is a spirit, but he created man in his image after his likeness and look at the image of man. Man has spirit. Does man have spirit? 
breath, man has spirit, right? Man has soul, psyche, right? And man has a carbon organic structure, right? So according to other people, they downplay it, which means that to them, he doesn't have a body or color. And that, or as Dante, Dante Fortson says, that's not scriptural. That a, that's a personal belief and opinion. So that's well said. Thank you, Dante. Adam had arms and legs. Adam had hair. Adam had a face. Adam had a skin color. Adam was walking, talking, self-portrait of Habore, the creator, Fetari, the creator, Bore, right? This brings us back to the book of Enoch. If the people in Noah's time were not white and all of the people on the earth were black, what color was Adam? If Adam was created in the image of Elohim and Adam was a man of color, right? What does that say about Elohim, about God? Very, very good. That's, that's, wow. There we go right there, right? So we saw this, this had popped up, right? This from 2018, September 19, 2018. So yeah, we had made some of those connections, but he further built up on it and we liked how he presented this particular point right here and even the title, Black Adam, Albino Noah, and the image of Elohim, and the image of, in translation, right, <laughs> God, right? And this is also one of the kind of presentations that have been used. Now, we're going to go a little bit more so in the whole albino thing, getting to the linguistics, right? But then that would have been maybe beyond the scope, right? You know, of some ones and ones, you know, that would just be showing the linguistics of it, you know, the linguistics of it all. But that's important as we move forward. We're going to then just go on the outro with some of these, um, I guess we could call it Noah-like, <laughs> you know, presentation, Noah. Now, remember that an albino person, right? Now, notice right here, the, if this is the father and that is the mother right here, the, 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 the woman appears to be an albino, but she's black, right? She has white skin, let's put it like that. The man has um, Adamic skin, we could say reddish brown. Now, look at the baby. Look at the baby. That's their baby right there. Let's zoom in. Is this their baby right here? So this proves, right? This proves that an albino person, remember, it was only Noah, Noch, that was described like this. His wife, the, the, the mother of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, was one of the Adamites, reddish brown people. We could say black people, right? Just to point that out, so how, how Noah would have looked among his, um, his people and the, and the people before the flood, right? This here, this um, Congo, this is in the, the Republic of Congo, albino mother and her child. Now look at the child. Look at her child. That's her child there, right? That's her child there. So we have pre-flood, right? This, this was kind of interesting, the contrast, like when it said the white men, it really meant that they were white in the sense of, and the, the language in the scripture that we're not able to show you right now, but we can show, right, meant that they were gray-haired, gray-haired. Some of the other translations, later translations of Enoch, clarify that particular matter, some of them. The racist ones, right, white supremacists continue that rhetoric there. Right. So here was Noah, something like this right here. Right. This th this will lighten up the room. Think about it to have that sort of child there. Right. And also with whatever spiritual aspects that Noah did have. Right. Would lighten up the room. Right. Would illuminate the room. Like, wow. Like, because the rest of us as babes, you see other babies. And this is the first time we're seeing anything like this. You have to remember. According to the context of the book of Enoch, this is the first thing they're seeing anything like that. Even this sister here, you can see that she is albino, or what they call albino, but she has white skin too, right? You know, you know, white skin, right? And the features, like people would say, is black features, right? And you say fairly attractive, even even so. But look at her hair. Her hair might seem blondish, right? But notice there's the wool. Right, it is it is white as wool. Like let's zoom in here. Can you see her hair? White as wool. Right? There's a whole different texture to the hair. Right? This girl right here as well. Right? We can see this as well. I, I say this is a girl, I think it's a girl, yeah. Right? But um you can see right here her hair. Right? Her hair. You can see you can see the blonde blondness, quote not blondness, but people might say it's blonde. If you want to say it's blonde, but look at the wool. 
Look at the wool, very, very unique, right? Now we have some people, the Caucasian people, which is interesting. Now, when we saw this, this was gonna be our first presentation. We'll probably save this and hold this right here. Noah was a black albino man. Enoch, now according to Enoch here, is the other one was 105, right? I think the Qumram, this is 106 and two. Noah had three sons. Yafith went north and is the father of the European nations, right? It is not evidence that Yafeth must have carried the albino gene. Right? Well, he might have carried a bino gene, but we know from archaeology, the Javanites, the Ionians, right? the Ionians, and the, um, who's the other people, the um, uh, Minoans, that's what they call them, the Minoans, think about it. This is where white people came from, right? Now, according to this presenter here, right? Here like wool, right? Skin, white like snow, right? Red like a rose, right? Red as a rose. And even in the white skin, you can see the reddish undertones right there, right? In, you know, from the, from the albino, the black, right? Here like wool, right? Pinkness of the skin underneath is showing through the skin, giving the person a rose-like color in appearance. Skin like white like snow, right? You see this right here? The record of the birth of Noah, chapter 106, Noah born an albino, and after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant, conceived by him, and bore a son, right? And his body was what? White as snow, and red as the blooming of a rose, and the hair of his head, and his long locks were white as wool, and his eyes beautiful. Right? Notice this right here. This is the conclusion right here. A blonde, blue-eyed, non-albino child born to a Nigerian couple. Right? Now, what's really interesting, the next phase is, let's look at the, the children of black albinos. Just so we can have, like, real-world evidence that proves the scriptural testimony. Right? DNA proves that both parents parents are the parents of the child. Japheth was also the child of Noah. Japheth is also the forefather of the European nations, right? But as he says, or, who, or they say here, there's nothing to indicate, right, that Japheth was that way. But what we're talking about here is Noah, right? Our knowledge and evidence says that Japheth was also black, but of course, we all have this gene, right? Even if we say all as black people, Right? But now white people is a further, even from the previous article, a further um, evolution, right? a further evolution. Now, what's interesting is that from an Indian albino, right, we get the albinos that bear more of the resemblances right, to European and white people. Just to point that out as a particular fact or factoid, right, get into all the the gene, you know, the gene, the, the genes, right? Get into the genes. Now here is Shem, right? This is supposed to be Shem and Noah, right? This here is supposed to be Shem and Noah, right? From some of the old Christian iconographies. This is one of the better pictures that right here because it kind of presents, you know, the this contrast, even though if we adjust the colors, right? You know, it can come out better. This wasn't the best one. There's a better one of this, but this is what we have to share and to show right here, right now. Right? These are some of the other iconographies of Noah, Noah and family, so forth and so on. It's obvious that they wasn't familiar at that time, at that stage, right? at least among th some, right? with this particular document, right? whoever drew this particular picture here. But what's clear is that they show the people as people of color. Right, you know, and this is also another one here, right, where you can see the people as people of color right here, right? Not just one stereotypical form of blackness, even God right here, right? You see God right there, right, according to the icon. So we can tell that not all Christians had this phobia, right, against this, this fear, false evidence appearing real. It's like white Europeans had developed this false evidence and comes down into a lot of the racism and Christianity that we get later on. Book of Enoch right there. It's not like this Noah movie. Remember this Noah movie? You know, Russell Crowe movie? But it was more like this right here, right? When we're speaking about Noah, 
right? How he was born, or by contrast, this, this sister amongst these other sisters, and I think of one brother, right, or one black man, and around by females, but the contrast, you see how the contrast, it's almost like, to describe this to someone, it's like the albino, or the one that's called the albino, with the white skin, kind of illuminates, right, amongst all the other ones. So we can see that, and we see the contrast here. We can even see the redness, like the rose, and all of that there as well. How would you describe it? Right from ancient times, using the ancient linguistics. So here brings us to this particular point, and I think here yeah, we have started out right there. One of the best presentations, I think that is a good still. Right, right. Um, this is a good still right here for Noah. Right, we'll just grab that right there. That is a good still for Noah, you know, and let's see if we can, let's see if we can, um, let's see if we can do this. Okay, there we go. Took a screenshot of that, right? Might have that as a still, but here we go, here we go. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Like, share, and subscribe. LOJS.org. Check out the Rastafari Israelites, the evening podcast, like, 10 p.m. right from Tuesday to the the after the Sabbath Saturday to the Rastafari Saturday sabbatical night right um the Seder right there 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 right after the Sabbath broadcast from 10 um Mondays 10:30 right and we have a first day service aka Sunday first day service at 1 a.m. so check it out check it out but any kind of communication we would direct it to lojs.org and hit and link contact right there, there, there. Or one can hit us up, you know, at um, Rastafari Jews at the Gmail. We try to check it, you know, fairly, you know, regularly, but that's also a way one can communicate with I and I. But best way, LOJS.org. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much, Khabarim. Thanks for the comments. If some of the more of the comments we like to get in more directly, you know, but generally commenting to some of the comments you know not getting personal or to personal person's comments give thanks for sharing those comments and those point of view iron sharp and iron one hand washes the other and both hands wash the face so let's be clean habarim shalom shalom habarim shalom